actually, uh, hi, I'm Sarah. Uh, I'm a voice teacher uh, and uh, I also perform some scientific research. And I wanted to share with you how this has helped me change my way of thinking about uh, pedagogy. Uh, I first started my research working with an MRI scanner and we researched the kinesthetic feeling and the anatomic intent. So our question was whether the anatomic intent, the singer saying, I am going to do this, for example, I am going to lower my larynx, <laughs> and the kinesthetic feeling, like I feel that my tongue is high, for example, whether that matches with what we see in the MRI scans. And actually it was so interesting to see that a lot of the times it does not correspond. There was one case where I would like to share this quote with you. This person was really trained very well in performing anatomic tasks, like do this with your tongue, do this with your uh, soft palate, do this with your nose. And what he said was, I know in theory my tongue must be high because I am singing an E, but I feel my tongue being low. He was saying that while being in the MRI scanner. So he heard it in a voice like this. And this made me change my whole way of working because I come from a point of view where I teach according the learning type. If I have a visual person in front of me, I will draw a lot of things on the board. If I have an auditory person in front of me, I will sing a sound and the person will be able to do it, even though he has absolutely no idea how he's doing it. When there's a logical person, I will say a lot of things like open your nose, close your nose, but for that nose. Now I know for a lot of my singers, if I want them to open their nose, I tell them close your nose because it feels the opposite. But then I don't, yeah, I don't share the whole story behind that. So obviously I do that in the end when the result is there. Then I explain to them, well, actually I told you to close your nose, but actually it was open because I knew I would obtain that goal. Of course, I explain in the end, you have to train how to interpret what you're feeling. This is what is actually happening. So this is the first thing I learned. And then I also work with video chymography. And we know that breath support is about holding back the air. Twang is also something about holding back the air. Well, we also know when we sing louder, it's quite unhealthy if we would apply audible air. If I go, hey, yeah, if I do that with air, it would not feel good. If I go silent, hey, it's okay to use air. But some of my singers, yeah, they just are as nerdy as I am. So they're just like, why? So as long as they don't understand why something is happening, it doesn't click in their head. <laughs> when I use video chymographic images, I can show them when you are singing loud, your vocal folds are closing like this. Closed, open closed, open closed, but obviously a lot faster. When you sing silently, if I use my terminology from CVT in neutral, for example, your vocal folds would go closed open, closed open, closed open. And even there is a posterior gap. So at the back of your vocal folds, there's a gap. So there is space and time for the air to be released. The more metal we sing, the more twang we use. That's actually the squeal, it's exactly the same. So what you do with the twang, you make the supraglottal pressure bigger, like when you squeeze the water hose. If we would not lower the subglottal pressure, holding back the air, then there will be too much pressure from both sides. So when you sing loud, you have to apply more twang to hold back the air and lower the subglottal pressure by supporting. And when I show them these pictures of what the vocal folds do when you sing louder, a lot of the, a lot of the students go, aha, now I know why, so now I can do it. Obviously with a visual, uh, with, a, with an auditory person, I can say whatever, okay, I don't care. So this has helped me a lot for teaching logical people and visual people. And it also has changed my way of, yeah, how do I interpret the feedback that the singer is giving to me? If the singer says, my tongue is low, 
do I trust him? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So actually, what is a really good exercise, it's not my exercise, I have uh, learned that uh, at CPI. If you put your hand in front of your mouth and you sing a very breathy ah, ah, or say ah, you can feel the hot air. When you go loud, hey, you can feel normally less air against your hand. So actually, this is a way of explaining it to a kinesthetic person. I feel the air or I don't feel the air. You can also, okay, some people claim that you cannot feel what is happening around the, the larynx or around the vocal folds. I tend to disagree, but let's agree to disagree. You can also sometimes feel that you're holding back the air.